All right. Let me explain a little bit about this. Um, this I, these ideas here. Um, you guys are so cynical. Well, the point of uh, doing the debate thing is that no, we can use more structure, and and I I have ideas about how to do this voting. You know, I said it should, I don't want it to be a popularity contest. Of course, that is what it'll be. Even if you try to vote, you know, in a like what a um, you know an, an objective way um, about uh, you know a, a formal type of debate. You can call that a popularity of the ideas. It's supposed to go down to things that really matter, but it's still like, how did that strike you and all of this stuff? So we're encouraging that actually. So the way to get around popularity to me, I think there's various tricks. One is you just don't, you don't just vote on who won. People are going to vote on tags like this was informative. This was that. So if, you know, somebody with a lot of viewers does a debate and has a lot of votes, at least we're going to have their fans putting some semantic idea of why they think that person's so great. We're going to try to get information out, these people's judgments of who won and thumbs up and stuff. We want to get that into information that then you could uh, see what people think. Because, I mean, you guys seem really, really certain that we're here to convince each other to believe what we believe, but... I, I don't see that. I don't think people know what they believe that well. I think we're here to find out what we believe by expressing it. And also to find out what other people believe. You know, and if I'm trying to convince people of something, it's more convincing you that I really believe what I uh, what I say, right? Some people say, I'm not racist, I just have this, that, you know. They have to work just to convince other people not to agree with their position. They might think that's what they're doing. But I'm waiting to, to believe it really even is their position. So just... I would impose tracking things um, in the software that enable us, well, not impose, because you don't have to use them, but there would you would enable these tracking things that would leave a record, kind of take a trace, you know, so these conversations don't just dissolve back in, but sort of fossilize, and there's some sort of a record. Um, but there's a bigger thing than that. What I, why I'm really getting excited about this cloud-based thing is because of the, this, the empowerment. You see, we all started with the internet. We had our own workstations, like our Sun workstations. You know, your computer was one of the servers on the internet. And then we started having the, you know, regular consumer clients that call into a computer like that. And they kind of forget that there's a computer there because they're just borrowing it while they're logged in. The cloud allows us to, to spin off and create these little entities of these servers. So you could come to a site like um, YouTube, and it could actually be created with the Federation. You know, the Vimeos, the conference reports, Gary, these people could all be joining together to present this video site, right? Do you understand? When you go to YouTube, it's not one computer. It's hundreds of computers all communicating and acting like one. So these servers could do that too, and yet what I think is good about this is there's a couple... See, I look sometimes for things where I have a belief, and I'm like, look for a system flexible enough to allow people to experiment um, contrary to what my particular belief might be. So for example, advertising. But anyway, so uh, by having this distributed, um, for example, let's say we had a, a YouTube type server and I had built it this way with the cloud and you guys didn't even know me and this was just the way YouTube worked. Well, if it worked the way I'm gonna set it up, when conference report gets all like, what the hell, I can't show my butt sometimes, it's just my art, please. He would probably leave that network because in this hypothetical, we had the same rules. And, and But all he'd have to do is start paying 20 bucks a month or 5 bucks a month or whatever to get his own server. He'd set up his version of the software and he could still reply to us. I, at my site, could choose to see those videos or not. You know, I could change my mind later. He might have been kicked out. Of, and that's where the advertising comes in, because I really think you can't have free speech in advertising. The advertisers have a right to say, hey, I don't want people that I'm trying to sell soap to to have to look at your butt. You know, so they're always going to exert that influence. So I don't think we could do that. That's why I want to do a subscription-based thing. But with this model, it's totally distributed. If somebody wants to have an advertising-based portal in, that's fine. But if they end up cutting out all of the content that people want, then those people will go somewhere else. So I just like the ecosystem 
And the, the way we would distribute the moderation, instead of having a central thing that has to get moderation right, or even get a community moderated system right, if we do this, we'll have nodes where certain people can say, hey, I only want the family friendly content. Other people like me would say, I only want the, the stuff that's taking, that's part of the greater public debate. And, you know, I'm just going to have funny videos. And this database, though, can all act as one. So when people go to the front end, they just see a site like a normal site that they would see. But we, the people that are invested in it, would have more control. If we wanted to be in this situation of just riding along for a freebie at an advertising site, we could. But when we got upset, we could upgrade that to having more control, trying to create our own community, add our own tools. And this could all be flexible. That decision wouldn't be, okay, well, I'm leaving my audience behind. It would just be a matter of, okay, I'm going to invest more in how I operate my content. And to everybody else, it's going to look the same. So to me, this is an organic system where we're putting back in, into the idea that, you know, really on the Internet, you're supposed to own your server. And we can do that. We can get that back. And we can do it in a way that grows organically. Understand, two years ago when I'm looking at this stuff, we're looking at having to spend three, five thousand dollars just to get started. These little microservers, they're much smaller. Well, they can't. We still need, you know, you still need, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars a month to have a big server. But you don't need to start with that. You can go ding, 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 and in in ten minutes you can say, okay, I've just doubled my capacity because we know there's more people coming. So, uh, yeah, um, but also, also the, the thing is that I don't like the way YouTube's interface for me works. Um, I want to have subscriptions. When I did my other website, you can see I want a subscription where I subscribe to a person and it shows me their latest videos. I don't want them all mixed together. So there's a lot of stuff like that I just want to do differently. And I would really like to get quick upload working because it hasn't been working on YouTube in forever. And that's what I really prefer to do, just to be able to go to the web page and go click upload. Okay. Cheers.